name is Gigi Young and thank you for being here for another video where I answer your questions from Facebook. Don't hesitate to also leave questions in the comment section or on my social media because I do go through and save them and you guys inspire me actually so much with what you're wondering and we're often also wondering the same things. So, Chris Overton says, at the moment, Gigi, I am just happy to see what you choose. I love everything you post. We just seem to have that connection. I think Alcio, Alcian may have something to do with it also. Well, maybe very much. Thank you very much, Chris. Shadow work. Okay, let's get into that one. This one is, and this one got a few likes, so this is something that everybody's feeling. And oh, it's actually really good to get into shadow work in the winter time. I'm not sure what that means. I feel like that's like the shadow coming in, but it's winter time for us in this hemisphere. It is the time of the shadow. We get quiet. We don't necessarily want to go outside. We go inward. And as soon as we go inward, there's the shadow. It's also darker earlier, especially the more northern parts. So shadow work. This one is from Gergana Lambreva. So hello, Gergana, and thank you for taking the time to ask me a question. And you said shadow work, integrating the shadow strengthening the inner child. You often emphasize the importance of this in your unique and practical perspective would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, so integrating the shadow and strengthening your inner child. Inner child is something that I am very big on. It is the in my In Plain Sight series, which is going right now, you'll, it's actually about the child. And so a lot of inner child stuff is discussed in that series. And in that series, we are going very deeply actually into kind of the collective inner child because we have this individual inner child, but we also have like a societal collective inner child. So for inner child stuff and the shadow, check out my In Plain Sight series on my channel right now because it's all about the shadow and the inner child. But you specifically wanted to know integrating the shadow and strengthening the inner child. So by mechanism alone, by definition alone, the more you strengthen your inner child, the more you heal the shadow. The inner child is a very, very special part of our consciousness. It's the beginning and it's the end. It's the aspect of ourself that is the, it's associated with purity and innocence and playfulness and all of these beautiful energies because it is basically the pure essence of our life force. It's the pure essence of God within us. It is us without stress, without worry, without almost responsibilities that we don't want to have. And that's why, as above, so below, that's why the child begins that way. But as we mature, we take on more and more challenges. And we go through these periods, these really formative periods where we lose our innocence and we damage our inner child. And that's kind of why the child is the beginning and the end in, in the sense of spiritual development is we start out perfect but naive but we have that template there of our perfect kind of, this perfect force within us, this perfect energy within us, this perfect response to things, this perfect, um, perfect resonance of how to view life. You know, there's no hate there, right? Um, there's, there's no real, I mean, maybe some, well, hey, I've seen some, I've seen some little demon children, so that's not, I'm sorry, but I have, I'm sorry, but I have. But for the most part, I'm just talking archetypally. So we start out with this perfect imprint and then we, we get damaged, but then that imprint stays there as kind of the inner child template and we have to become the parent, we have to become the force that we never had. 
It could be we have to become more nurturing to ourselves. It could be that we have to become more disciplined and more focused with ourselves. But whatever damaged happened to us as a child, wherever we lost our innocence in a very negative way, a very hurtful way, is trauma. So we begin to develop this pattern within our energy body, within our mind, within our heart, within our entire being that shapes our entire world that's based on basically our trauma. Avoiding trauma, avoiding pain, but also these choices where we can begin to um, give our, regain that inner child. And so the more that we choose that, the more we sort of banish the shadow, the more we heal the shadow, and we come full circle, because it's the beginning and the end, we come full circle back into the wise child. So we begin as the naive child where we are spiritual just because we exist. You know, you see babies and they grab their feet and they go in happy baby position in yoga. So many yoga positions are actually inspired by what children naturally strive. They naturally want to stretch their little bodies in certain ways. And um, they just, they're just, they're just one with spirit. Not because they've earned it on earth yet, but because it's just what they are. It's just what they are. You know, you see little children and they're, you know, they come from all these different backgrounds and they just want to play Lego together. They just want to braid each other's hair. They just want to be, you know, kids. They want to be children. And so they're, but, but they are that because they don't know any better. They haven't lost that innocence yet. Right. And so then when it's the other side, it's the wise child. It is the divine child. That is when you've earned that essence back. You've earned that. And there's not a part of you that is playful, that allows yourself to be wild in certain ways or approach things with an open, flexible mind. There's, there, that is all something that you've earned back. You lost it. You didn't trust it anymore, but you earned it back. And so that is really the importance of the inner child. How do we do that? Gigi, great. <laughs> How do we do that? How you do that is by, first of all, understanding that. First of all, we really do have to understand that the inner child, and this is something that Carl Jung really realized, and he, they, a, a lot of psychology people started to really place the inner child. They really started to realize that, yeah, when the inner child gets damaged, when children are damaged, it really makes it so it's very difficult to have that core energy to heal with and to move through like it really damages something and it really pulls society down so a lot of psychologists started to understand and work with this so there's actually a lot of good teachings on it and actually when society began to realize how important the child was that's when all this ingenuity came because suddenly kids had this space that was mandated for them to just be kids. And that gave them a, lot, a big enough impression of their own heart and their own spirit unadulterated, hopefully, that they actually had this template to go forward and refer to. So we're actually very fortunate that even though the school system isn't great and stuff like that, we actually at least have some of that because even 150 years ago, we didn't. Um, so, so basically what we wanna do when it comes to practical, um, integration of the shadow is we want to realize that where we've lost our innocence is where we are damaged, where we have felt like something was taken from us or where we felt victimized is where we are damaged. And in those places, we have to realize in those circuit, like when it comes up, we have to realize the answer to this is being the force of love that we did not receive because for whatever reason, that trauma has proliferated and made you afraid to be yourself. It's made you afraid to do things in the world. So you have to say, be honest with yourself when you are experiencing frustration, you're experiencing your shadow, you're experiencing a dark emotion. Go in there and ask, where is this coming from? Start to feel, start to get impressions about where you think this came from. 
And it's amazing actually when you get still and you ask your higher self, show me. Over time, you can begin to have this rapport with it where it will show you the, the times where, where it happened. It may at first just show you an emotion or an image or whatever it is. See if it can show you that. If it doesn't show you that, if you don't know exactly where that trauma begins, that's okay too. You can just say, what is the counterpoint energy that would balance out this feeling? Every, every low point of emotion has a balancing and harmonizing counterpoint, right? So what you can say is like, I'm really bothered by this. I'm really frustrated. What would happen if I did something very loving for myself, right? And just start to guess at what would balance that because remember when it comes to healing the inner child and he healing the shadow the technique really is becoming that force in your life that you didn't have that trauma prolifer trauma pr proliferated and became deeply seated in you to the point that it's now a shadow aspect because you didn't receive something so you couldn't process it. Now, what was that? What was that that you didn't receive in that moment, right? So if you can't guess what it is, and there's different, there's different sort of shadow techniques for this, but if you're wanting to just do it on an energetic level, what you wanna do is just bring in that energy. So it's probably gonna be something very nurturing or something very disciplinarian because we tend to because it's the inner child aspect of ourself, we do tend to respond to either kind of a divine masculine energy or this divine feminine energy. It's usually somewhere where we need to be nourished and we almost need to pick up our inner child and just love it. Or we need some kind of discipline that says, no, um, you need to do this activity, that activity, this and that. And it's more of a motivating force. So usually when it comes to healing inner child trauma, it's usually kind of more of a divine masculine parent energy that needs to come in, or it's more of that divine feminine, divine mother, mother, father energy that we have to actually assume the role of in order to heal. So that is the dynamic. There's obviously so many books and so many techniques around the shadow, but I would caution people there because some of the shadow exploration techniques, they are aggressive and you really do wanna work with your shadow. I talk about this in my shadow work video. I think it is spiritual, I think it might actually be called spiritual mistakes. I talk about spiritual mistakes with the shadow and you, when it comes to working with the shadow, you really do want to work with it when it comes up organically. So you want to work on developing shadow healing techniques that come up in the moment that you can work on them later that day or in the moment when they come up because you don't really wanna go digging for your shadow. You don't really want to because there's a real problem also in the new age of people becoming obsessed with their shadow and almost hypnotized by the shadow, by the darkness, and then they get addicted to the numbness that it creates. And they think that the numbness that happens when they're saturating themselves too much in shadow, too often, is actually peace. And there's a difference between numbness and just disassociation that happens to save you it's like a reaction that happens to make it so you're not overwhelmed and the actual powerful energy of peace that's full of life and full of energy so some of the shadow healing techniques are actually traumatizing people more and pushing them into numbness and then people think that that's peace and that's not the case you really don't want to go looking for your shadow, make it your hobby to go digging into your shadow and constantly looking for these aspects of yourself and going deeply into the experience all the time. Um, for that reason, you really ideally want to work with your shadow when it comes up because that means that you're right in the trigger. It's very difficult with shadow work to accurately recreate the trigger to go into. So say you, you, it's very difficult to just say, I want to do shadow work today. 
because it's you can't actually work with the shadow that way. It has to kind of rise on its own and then you have to be in it and then you have to start working with it through asking yourself the right questions, feeling authentically what emotions you feel and then bringing in the opposite. So you have to kind of do the alchemy when it comes up. But when you do it, you get faster and faster and faster. So I hope this helps. I hope it's specific enough for you. Um, so yeah, integrating the shadow and strengthening the inner child. They're all connected, but with strengthening the inner child, you really want to make sure that every single day you're taking a risk. The inner child starts to become weaker and weaker and weaker, really when we stop taking risks, playful risks in our life. The comfort zone and the inner child are not good friends. The inner child loves to be in the present moment. And when we are authentically in the present moment, when we're authentically in our heart, when we're, there, when we're authentically ourselves, we will actually be driven to take small risks every day. Because when we take small risks every day, we nourish ourselves with light that we didn't have before. When we stop taking risks, we essentially become, we lose light, we lose um, our connection with ourselves. we lose our edge. And so the inner child will push you to look at something a little bit different, to redecorate your house, to tr dress a little bit differently, to add a little different style. Your inner child will keep you on your edge and um, it'll keep you in the present moment. Another way to honor the inner child is to be in the present moment and observe the world through the heart and through a sense of wonder and awe. Wonder and awe are also part of the inner child. And when we heal the inner child, we start feeling open enough and um, confident enough to have awe. A lot of people are afraid to generate very, very, very powerful spiritual emotions that are associated with the inner child because they're afraid it's immediately going to get taken away. And we have this associate when you know your you, you know your inner child is struggling when you you really don't want to take any risks and you really feel like whenever you generate a feeling of awe or a feeling of kind of joy for no other reason than you feel joy or no other reason than feeling peace, you know that there's an issue within the inner child that has to do with feeling as though the moment that you uh, rise, it's going to get taken away. But what that says as a shadow function is that you're letting the external world dictate your internal world. And part of the inner child is getting to a place where your internal world becomes the most important thing you focus on and you understand that the external world is a function of, the, of your inner world. And you really have the bravery to live that way. When we become shocked through trauma, through abuse, through shock, and our inner child gets more and more damaged, we create that imprint in our life. What ends up happening is we just don't want to take any risks. We're afraid to be happy. We, um, we don't, we're afraid of the spirit because the, the inner child is basically just like the spirit embodied almost. Um, or, it, or it is, it's the pure, that pure essence. And so you really want to watch for these things and you want to say, nope, I'm, I'm taking a risk today. I'm getting out of my comfort zone. Um, and the heart will always also lead you right into the inner child. So always develop that. That's such a hack. And so I think that's it. That's what I would say. Shadow work, integrating the shadow and strengthening the inner child. A lot of it is being honest with yourself and honest with yourself when you're uncomfortable. A lot of it also is being able to sit in negative emotion. And we think that we're weaker than we are, but this is the thing about developing your intuition is that when you develop your intuition and your psychic ability, um, emotion, 
no matter what it is, is information. So when you're, when you're not on the path to regaining your psychic abilities in life, regaining that higher intelligence, because all psychic ability is, is higher intelligence. When you're not on that path to regaining that, very complex things like emotions and thoughts become too simple. Sadness, anger, you know, these very kind of basic things that when you're actually intuitively developing, you're actually in the habit of listening to yourself, you're, you're getting your sensitivity back, your permeability, you realize that that negative emotion is a story. That negative emotion that you feel that you, first of all, you can sit in it because you're not immediately like, ah, no, 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 no negative emotions and you become number and number. You can sit in the negative emotion and you say, wow, this is anger. Okay. Ooh, not only is it anger, it's righteous anger. Okay, this is righteous anger that I've had for a long time. Or, okay, this is righteous anger that I feel like I'm just getting because of this. Okay. Um, oh, this is, this is sadness. Okay, no, this is, this is grief. Okay, this is grief that's originating from a past life that I have this pattern of. This is ancestral. Okay, so we start to realize that with the development of intuition, we start to be able to deal with thoughts and emotions as complete packages of information. And so if you want to be good at shadow work, if you want to be, if you want to understand the inner child and that relationship, al allowing yourself to know that you can get to a point with your sensitivity where you can understand that an emotion isn't just an emotion, it's information. It is information. A thought isn't just a thought. There's a bunch of information surrounding that thought. But, um, yeah, that's, that's good. We'll, we'll do that for today. And um, thank you so much, Gurgana, for uh, writing in. I hope that gives you some more stuff to chew on in regards to shadow work and the inner child. As always, all my love your way. 